Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Alex Warren, and welcome to Locked In, the show where we investigate the truth behind the clickbait. Once my guest steps into the studio, we set the timer to 60 minutes, lock the door, and throw away the key. The only way out is when the timer hits zero. In this episode, we're locking in the Meon Twins. Oh, Hello, my I'm God. <laughs> Mom, come help. I'm kind of scared. I'm not going to lie. Are you? A little bit. Well, welcome, you guys. Uh, Thank you. Right. A warm welcome. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I actually like to start this off with a crime. As you guys said before we started this, this looks like a... <laughs> investigation room. Yes. <laughs> said it before we even walked in. And you were totally right. <laughs> Fantastic. So I accuse you of a crime in the beginning. And towards the end, I decide if you, whether or not you're guilty. Oh, um, that's cute. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's a fun little gag that we get to have since the t- podcast sometimes gets a little too deep. So it's a fun thing to kind of circle back on at the end. Sure. And the crime that I've come up with, you guys, is exchanging identities to avoid jury duty. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. I know. But for this wow. moment now, I'm going to split you guys up. I'm going to have my partner, Calvin, uh, who's also um, a part-time police officer. Calvin is going to escort out Azra. And we'll start with oh. Aisha. Thank Bye, you, Calvin. <laughs> You're going to go ahead and go with Calvin. No way. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to escort you out the building. I didn't know they made V-neck police officer outfits. Looking good, good, Calvin. I want to be escorted out. Your ass looks so good. Wow. Where'd you get those? Oh, wow. wow. Dude. Wait a minute. Dude, Stairmaster has been doing you right. (laughs) All right. Lock the door. We're good. Now I'm waiting to be escorted out. I'm excited. I know. Just so I can see Calvin. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little nervous. Why? No, I'm a pretty open book, so I'm Okay. okay. Um. I'm ready for whatever you're going to throw at me because I know this isn't very normal. I don't uh-uh. know what you have planned, so I'm just going to like let it be. No, nah, have fun just with, it. with it's it. It's exciting. Okay. So who was fir- Who was born first? Azra. Really? Long, st- long story short because we don't want to be here all day. Sure. Basically, um, Azra, so we're nine minutes apart, but she was born natural. I was born C-section, which is really rare. When it comes to like twins, usually oh my both God, are your natural. Both. Yeah, she got the umbilical cord tied around my neck, and she was being born, so they had to do an emergency C-section on me. So that's why Jesus. it took like nine minutes. Holy crap! And she tried to kill me. I want. There's so much about you two that I don't know. I know. And we've been friends for a little while now, yeah. which is even more interesting. But something that I wanted to find out was some like it's just so insane. We've been friends forever. I feel like I don't know everything about you. We keep a lot private. I know why. I'm sure you go through this too. Like when it comes to putting your life online, there gets a point where like where you don't know what you should or shouldn't be sharing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And I noticed that the less I keep certain things offline, the more at peace I am. And I don't have to like worry about other people's opinions about certain things that like I might be going through or just dealing with or whatever. So I don't know. We kind of like pick and choose what we share and what we don't share, but it also makes things exciting because people are always questioning it. I think it's also like an interesting topic of like kind of, being able to share something that actually means something. Or like there's oh, a lot of, of people who are like, oh, like everything is like even me. Like I talk about everything I've gone right. through. To the point where it's like when I talk about my insane like childhood story, it's kinda like, okay, yeah, we know. We've heard it. <laughs> we like they already know that about you. Sure. Right. In a way. In a way. But I don't know. There's certain things where I even question sometimes. I'm like, I don't even think I'll end up sharing those things. That's interesting. I think I'll just let it be in my own head. I, I don't love know. That. It keeps my life kind of private at the same time, sure. so I like it. Do you value a private life in this job? Because like a lot of our, a lot. a lot of the things we do is public. Very. And you know what? Su- what sucks is sometimes when I try to keep things private and they go public, it's like shoot. Now how do I like? You have to kind of like explain yourself. Not that that's happened a lot, but like, I don't know. It's like at times I feel like I'm filtering myself a little too much because I like to keep certain things offline. Sure. But then it's all of a sudden like I'm becoming like a picture perfect online person. That's like. Like very like scripted. I'm I start to like end moments feel very scripted. Really? Because I'm filtering myself so much about things I don't want to share. And, and I'm like, does that come across as not genuine? I don't so. Think it's so. like a balance. I don't know. I'm still trying to find the balance. I, sure, I mean, how long have you been doing social media? In the social media game, it's only been like a year and a half, but we've been doing like social media for like eight years. Jesus. But it never took off. Did, all right, all right, this I love asking people this question, especially yeah. in this space. Do you did you like all of a sudden really want to pursue this, or is this kind of like a like for me? I did social media to inevitably get to music and sure. all these cool like things that I'm doing now. It's yeah. just the byproduct of that commitment. What essentially made you want to do social media? Do you still love it? Are you trying to go to somewhere else? Like what what's the game plan and how did it start? So I do still love it. Um, at moments, I mean, sometimes it gets tough because like you don't, it's like the most unsteady career to have because sure. no one's really unlike kind of, no one's gone through this path to like tell us the right way to do it. You know what I mean? Like we're right. still kind of like the newest generation that's having social media as a career. Mm-hmm. But um, I remember when I was younger, I've always wanted to like, I always looked up to like certain people on YouTube. 
Yeah. Like everything started on YouTube. And um, I would religiously like watch their videos and be like, oh, like I want to inspire someone the way that these people inspire me on a daily. Because I remember there was a few like handful of YouTubers that I'd watch and be like, they make me happy and I can't wait to be that person for someone else. You know what I mean? Right. So that was always the mindset. And then it never took off. And then quarantine hit and we decided to hop on TikTok, which is what ended up taking off, which was definitely not the plan for me because I was like, I want to be a YouTuber. Sure. And here I am doing TikTok. Um, but in the long run, what I've realized now is I still want to be able to influence people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, I think the smartest way to go about that is also making moves in a business standpoint at where I'm at right now. Because if I really want to keep myself at like a steady, um, comfortable place for my entire life, I have to start making like smart moves like that. I've known you guys for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I also know that you're very religious. Yes. Walk me through that. We were born in a Muslim household. So we were raised um, Muslim and actually... Today we're fasting because it's the month of Ramadan. You were telling me. That's crazy. You put the water away. Is I that why? I don't want <laughs> – so you can't have water. So that's the funniest part is people are always like, not even water. And I'm like, honestly, that's the toughest part of fasting is not being able to drink anything because dehydration sucks. My mouth is very dry right now. But anyway, it's great. I It's like the most holy month, so I'm like feeling more closer to God. And like the, I think the one tough part about being – um not even tough. I don't want to say tough, but – a struggle I've realized being in the social media space is that since we do represent the Muslim community in a sense, mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to get judgment from people because oh, I'm sure. obviously not a perfect Muslim. I could be, you know, covered. I can be more modest. I could be praying five times a day. There's a lot that I could be doing, right? So it's like I am allowing myself to get the backlash of not being that perfect Muslim, but I'm also learning myself as I'm getting older about things that I should be doing and shouldn't be doing. You know what I mean? So it's been a learning process, but I think I'm just – I always say this. I'm so happy with how my parents raised me. And I always say, like, when I have kids when I'm older, like, I want my parents to raise them because they raise us so well. Like, my morals and my values are so important to me that no matter how much influence is around me, I won't get distracted, which that's, I love. That's beautiful. I, I, I genuinely don't know a lot about the Muslim um, religion, and mm -hmm. it's fun to kind of just watch your content and see how, like, the way you're portrayed. And like you sure. said earlier, like, you're an influence heavily for the Muslim community, and I think you Very are. Very much, yeah. And so I—, I that must be a lot of stress. It is. It's it's not even I don't even want to say stress, but it's it's very it's an intimidating place to be in because like as much as I love to represent, I'm not a perfect representation. Sure. So it's like when I'm doing something or saying something, I will constantly get judged for what I'm doing and I'll be like, I understand that I might not be perfect, but it kind of just comes with me having the platform. It's like I didn't ask to, but I'm also grateful that I do have the platform. Yeah. So it's just, I don't know, it's a tough spot. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still new into it where there's like a good amount of eyes on me where I have to like say certain things or do certain, certain things. But I also, at the end of the day, want to stay true to like myself. I think it's fun. beautiful. I think it's beautiful because even yeah. though you you say you're not a perfect Muslim, I still think it's it's something that people look up to you for. And I think way, there's a sure. lot of girls who look up to you and and smile like someone is just like me and, mm -hmm. and is thriving and that's success. That's what I love, exactly. It's, it's, such, it's such a beautiful thing in my personal I appreciate thing. it. Oh, that's sweet. So religion too – do you, when you're, and forgive me if I'm getting a little too forward here, but do, when you're dating, have you dated in LA at all? Okay, so I'll explain. Walk me through this, yeah, so please. Obviously, once again, um, people might um, view it differently than I do when sure. I interpret it, but sure. the way that I grew up um, interpreting that, I guess, is we don't date necessarily. Like, we don't call it dating. We don't have a boyfriend. We don't have a girlfriend. Sure, right. we do go through the phases of talking to someone. Both my parents ended up having um, families that wanted to arrange marriages for both of them. So that was kind of things that happened to the older generations of my family, but my sure. parents didn't do that. Um, so the way that we were raised was, you know, go about your education, live your life, and then if someone comes along, give yourself the opportunity to get to know them. And people might label that part of getting to know someone as dating, but we just don't label it as that. We just label it as you get to know someone and then you will have a relationship in terms of getting married and stuff. That's so interesting. Holy and that shit. part of my life I keep very private. Yeah, you don't talk about that. No, not at all. You you don't think you ever will? I've noticed in the past that, okay, yeah, like I'll go through phases of talking to a guy, and every single time I allow more opinions or eyes onto me and that person, the more judgment and the more, um, the more I overthink the situation. Sure. I feel like when it comes to – me talking to someone, it's best for me to keep that between me and that person. And of course, my family will know, you know what I mean? Right. Or at least my sisters and my mom. But I've just found that it's easier for me to go about it that way because I don't have to worry about everyone else's opinion about me and that person. Something that you and your sister don't do is cuss. True. Is that religion or is that just no, you? No, it's not even a religion. It's crazy. My mom, 
my mom's gonna hate me for saying this. She has a potty mouth. That okay. woman is cusses like a <laughs> sailor. It is so crazy. And my dad once in a while too. We were just raised not cursing, and I just never had temptation. Wow. But it's it's crazy though, because as time has gone on, like I used to not mouth curse words in songs because I was like that strict about it. Sure. But now I'll mouth them, but I'm not saying them out loud, right? So right. like, let's say I'm doing a TikTok audio. I'll lip sync it, and in real life, I'm not saying it. But now I'm getting bashed for cursing when I'm like, I'm not even saying the word in real life. I'm just mouthing it. So are you are you waiting till marriage to like kind of do all the couple things? Yes, that's something Calvin's doing as well. Calvin, you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin is also doing it for religious reasons as well. Really? Yeah, he's 22. I'm 21. So yeah, Love no, that. I um, that was never something I talked about online, and I'm I feel like based on. The persona that I can, or like the look that I give, or sure. how I can come across, people would assume that I um, would get around. I guess you can say. Why? Don't know. I guess okay. it's because like I'm intimidating. I'm also a very flirtatious person naturally. Okay. So when I talk to people, it, it could come across as like, oh, she's really friendly. I'm sure she's like, you know, whatever. Sure. But then they know me, and they're like, oh, she literally is a virgin, a I little didn't know. baby. I mean, you you were home. You were uh, what was called homecoming queen. So. Know about that? I have a wow. I have a dossier. So oh you were home, who 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 are you paired with for your homecoming? Oh my god, I'm gonna expose myself right now because he doesn't even know this. Patrick, if you're watching, I had the biggest crush on you in high school. Oh, um, he was homecoming king, but he was also like student council, like president, whatever, right? Right. And oh my god, funny story. I was the so when I was running for homecoming queen, I made it onto court, which I was really excited about. And all the other girls were like super popular. And I don't really know if I would consider myself popular in high school because I just don't consider myself like popular. Right, right, right. But I was like part of like orchestra and I was part of like the art club and oh, I was wow. like art director and I was part of like all these different things that I feel like I was able to make my way around with like the different groups of people in high school. Sure. That that gave me the better odds of winning when it came to like other people who kind of were more clicky. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was kind of like how I got lucky with winning. But Patrick, yeah. Patrick. In my line. I'm just kidding. He's probably in a relationship. No, I don't know. I haven't kept up with him. We're catcalling Patrick. Yeah, we are. It's so, so <laughs> I, doesn't see I love it. I was never a homecoming king, so Were I'm you glad. Were homecoming court? What's that? It was her name even on the ballot for choice. Aw. Yeah. Sad Alex. <laughs> I have my crown. I'll give it to you to I, I will gladly take your crown. Okay. So you're from Staten Island, right? I am. That's awesome. Isn't Pete Davidson from there? He went to my high school. Really? My cheer coach um, taught him. She was like, ah, oh, he was a troublemaker. Yeah, it sounds like Pete. Sounds like Pete. How did you like growing up in Staten Island? It wasn't bad. Like, I liked Staten Island. Obviously, there's like this negative view of Staten Island being like fake New York, which is, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty true. But in general, Staten Island's like so chill where it's like you can consider it Jersey because like, at least where I'm from in Staten Island, I'm basically... Jersey, like at that point, because I'm like right at the end. Right. Um, but it's more chill. Like when you think of New York, you think of like hyper, you know, tall buildings and stuff, but it's not that at all. Um, kids were great there. I was like pretty friendly with everyone. Everyone was pretty open and accepting of like everyone there. It was just like, because once again, New York is like a melting pot of people. It's sure. Like, there's different cultures and ethnicities and whatever religion everywhere. So it was easy growing up. And then yeah, I wouldn't say it was tough at all. Like, I really enjoyed it. Like, when I go back, I always have a good time, too. It's like everyone kind of knows everyone there, too. So right. it's not bad. Was there anything in your childhood that kind of, like, made you to who you are today? Like, was there – how was your – how was growing up? How was – I would say definitely the way I was raised with my parents is what made me what I am today. Right. Especially with my sisters. Do you sisters. have a good relationship with them? Fantastic. Amazing. Um, I would say I'm closer to my mom, though, just because that's kind of, like, the dynamic our household has. Was sure. Like, there was four girls and, like – Four? Just, Wait, you have two – Two older sisters. What? Yeah. So one got married at 19. Wow. One just got married. She's 22. Love it. So we're 21. So we're 21. The other one's 22. The other one's 23. Are you going to have a full-fledged like Muslim wedding? Yeah. I mean, it go all out. So my older sister, the, no, the second oldest, uh, she's 22 now. She was 19 when she got married. Mm -hmm. And her husband's Albanian. And since we're half Albanian, she, they, she did like a whole Albanian wedding. Crazy. Wow. Beautiful. Um, and then my sister that just got married recently, um, she got married to a Turkish guy. So it's she's... She's half Albanian, Pakistani, then he's Turkish. So they're also going to have like some, you know, How do you pronounce Janat? Janet. 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 Mm -hmm. And uh, Jasmina. Jasmina. Mina for short. I love that. Yeah. So, okay. So going into this, you have two older sisters mm -hmm. who have already been married and that's beautiful. Is there something for you where like, are you looking for someone who understands your religion and understand and like maybe is like Muslim or mm -hmm. are you kind of just open to anything? Growing up, it was instilled into our brain to be like, because my my parents are really open because obviously they married outside of their culture 
Um, so since my mom is Albanian and my dad is Pakistani, they oh, both wow. are Muslim, but obviously different cultures. Sure. So usually Albanians will marry Albanians and Pakistanis will marry Pakistanis. Right. So they kind of broke away in a way. You know what I mean? So it was kind of looked down upon when they were um, together. So that's why um, when we were raised, they kind of made it easier for us where they were like, we don't care like what culture you decide to you know go for. It could be any, any ethnicity, but as long as they have the same religion, which I find really important for me too because sure. I want them to have the same morals. Um, and at least understand so it's easier for our kids when, you know, they get raised and stuff like that. But I will say finding someone in California is hard. Slim to none. Like my even, mom and dad even, are like. Even without the same religion. Oh, my God. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm like, you don't even have to be Muslim, but I still can't find a guy. Like, yeah. make this make sense. I always wonder this. What happens if you end up finding someone and you get to know them and, and all these things and they end up not? You know what? Muslim. That's a great question that we're going to have to find out if that happens oh because God. I really don't know. I mean, I've talked about it with my parents before. Like, what happens if we just fall in love with someone? And sure. that was kind of like always the conversation we had when we were younger. We were like, we're scared if that happens because like, you know, like what if we really fall in love? But I don't know. I don't think I would. Hey, that's an option. It is an option. <laughs> that's an option. So, hey, if you really want to marry me and you're not Muslim, just convert. Just we'll get convert. married. <laughs> Someone comes up to DMs and he's like, I converted. I will convert for you. Oh, my like, goodness. Oh, my gosh. Jesus Christ. That's funny. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, sorry. So dating in LA, I mm -hmm. want to circle back to this because it's so mysterious with you. And I, it's so interesting. <laughs> I want to know more, and I don't know if you're willing to share more. All right. In your history, how long have you been in LA? A year and a half. What has it been like? I know you don't want to go into detail about who or what, but what has it been like? What's your experience dating I in LA? I will say the one thing that makes it interesting in terms of like how it's been is that living with guys, especially when I was at the compound, Sure. like usually growing up, it's seen as you don't leave the house until you're married. Sure. So the thought of living with a guy wasn't even something that crossed my mind. And then, you know, the opportunity came when our parents let us. Mm -hmm. So I think being able to live with guys changed my perspective a lot because it was always seen as like, if I'm in the same household as a guy, it's like either I'm married to him or it's like family member, you know sure, what I mean? Sure, yeah. But now that it's like, I can have, a, I have so many guy friends and my parents even like, they visited like last month and met so many of my guy friends. And I'm like, I've never thought I'd see the day that my dad would walk <laughs> into the house and see me hanging out with guys and be okay with it. Sure. Because when I was younger, like a guy's name on my phone would be a girl. It would be like, right, you I would didn't have wanna, to, you didn't wanna... I didn't want my parents knowing I was texting a guy. So I'd put his name as Christina instead of Christian, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, wow. So it's been interesting, but I, as time's gone on, I've realized that my parents have become so... Um, understanding and with the time that they know what right. you know, like life is like. They know that we're going to be hanging out with guys, going to dinners, this, that, that they're chill with it. So it's been easier. Um, and yeah, I feel like I know what I love you're how you're kind of walking around yeah. it. <laughs> well, why don't you clarify what you want me to talk about? No, no, no. I, I think it's just like I, something for me that I'm – what's so fascinating to me is like dating in L.A. as hard as it is. I've right. never done it. I came to L.A. in a relationship. So hearing about everyone's stories about like kind of – what they've encountered and, and, and necessarily their experiences dating in L.A. is just something fascinating to me. But you are specifically interesting because you don't, you, you don't subscribe to the fact that, it, you know, you're dating. You're talking right. with someone. Mm -hmm. Does that hinder your ability to get to know someone, do you 100%. think? 100%. And how? Well, you know what? I don't want to say it's, it's tough necessarily because usually if they're Muslim, like, they have a pretty good understanding as to, like, what that means when it sure. comes to we're not going to label it as us being together, but right. whatever. Um, I feel like I really haven't gotten enough experience to know, to be honest, because sure, like I'll get to know a guy mm -hmm. and, um, cause I'm single right now, but I'll get to know a guy and like, whatever it will, we'll talk here and there and then things don't really work out. It's like, my mom always said this. She was like, you go out with him once, see if you like him. She's like, okay, you can't tell by the first time, obviously. So go again. She goes, go a couple of times. But after a handful of times, you're going to know, are you into the person or are you not? Have you ever felt like you liked someone? Like genuinely liked yes. someone? Have you ever felt like you love someone? Yes. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to figure this out. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Have you and your sister ever liked the same person? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. And how did you navigate that? Oh, God. <laughs> um, yes. Well, here's what happened. Please. Um, I can't clarify too much because this person will know who I'm talking about. 100%, like, this person please. will know who they are. Right. But um, it was back at home. Mm -hmm. And we both had a crush on this guy. Right. And he ended up making a move on... Azra, and then not making a move, but like no, you know, I know, I know, flirting, flirting you know? back. We get in the car as soon as we leave their house, and we both go. I call dibs. <laughs> 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 you were laughing, and 
Turns out he has a girlfriend now, so neither of us have him. That's so lame. Yeah. Oh, my God. Funny story. So, okay. I but our types it. are the opposite now. Really? Like polar opposite. Oh What's your God. type? Like, looks-wise? Yeah. I used to say, like, tall, dark, and handsome. Okay. But now I've noticed I like pretty boys. So, like, as long as you look put together and clean, like. Interesting. Meanwhile, Ozra likes like skater boys that look like oh. eating drugs. You mm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very, very different. We all have that phase, Ozra. I know. It's okay. She'll get over it soon. <laughs> <laughs> you and your sister are very close. You guys live very. together. You've lived together practically your A whole lives. Too much. You guys have loved the same guy. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's been crazy. How do you navigate the fr- like the friendship sister bond? And it, like obviously there's gonna be times where you absolutely fucking hate each other. But how do you like is there like a way you guys kind of Figure it out. Because like with my siblings, I lived with them for 18 years. I right. couldn't I, – I, I feel like sometimes it, there's a disconnect. And I, yeah, very It's much. more of like I'm friends with my siblings, but I'm not friends with my siblings enough to live with them anymore. How do you do it? Therapy. <laughs> really? Not yet, but we've been talking about it because sure. I've noticed that lately – Obviously, I'm sure this goes with you and Cover. Like, when you spend so much time with the person, you're going to need time apart, whether it's 20 minutes, sure. an hour, a day, whatever, sure. right? I don't get a break from this girl. <laughs> and when I tell you I love her with my whole heart, I'm sick of her. <laughs> like, I don't think you understand. I actually drive myself crazy. There are times where she'll come in my room, uh-huh. and I'll be like, why are you in my room? She's like, I can't just come in your room. I'm like, no, I just, I really want to be away from you right now. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. And it's like, again, you know the siblings. It's just like you bicker all the time and this and that, and like we're so close. And you guys we, also work together. That's what gets tough. It's like sure. maybe there are days where I'm more motivated to work and she's not, vice versa. Mm-hmm. And then it causes bickering because she's like, no, but I want to do this and I want to do this. And it's like we have to compromise in that sense. But we both know that in this moment of our life right now that we both do need a little bit of a break from each other because it's been getting like a little too excessive with the bickering right. that we thought about therapy. And I'm like, honestly, I'd be down because – Like couples therapy and then you guys just come yeah, in. Yeah, like, like literally. Like, like siblings. Like, dude, it's honestly the same thing. We're with each other all day long. It's right. literally like a couple. Right. Um, yeah, it's been stressful more than lately. I mean, that's understandable, too. You guys are in, like, the heightened part of your careers, but also yeah. your life. It's just very, like, every decision that I make is going to reflect both of us at the end of the day. You know what sure. I mean? And vice versa, too. Exactly. So it's like now I can't even do things that I enjoy sometimes because I'm like, uh, it's going to reflect Osro or affect her in a way where right. I just can't do it myself. Do you find it difficult to find, like, space or your own time for yourself ever? I don't get space or time for myself. Well, that- when I go to sleep. You know what's good is <laughs> I'll tell you this. I'll when you I'm, this. like, completely unconscious. <laughs> It's when I have time for myself. Yeah, because when we were living in New York, we shared a room with all three, like all four of us. Right. Like me and my sisters all shared a room. So sure. we really had no personal space. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that I live with just Osra, like sure, we don't get a lot well, of you guys personal just live, space. Just you two? Well, Nate too. Oh. But like he's never home, so it doesn't sure, even count. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's the one good thing, literally, um, is we do have separate rooms. So when it does come to that time, we will spend a lot of time apart. And I think as of lately, we've kind of developed a few different friends where now like I can go hang out with my friends and she can go like hang out with hers. Right. Which usually we always have the same friend group. And we still kind of do, but like we've noticed that there are times where we'll go hang out at separate times with different people, which is necessary. That I must think, be nice. As of lately, yeah. You guys are vastly different. Extremely different. Which I, I think is, is something that kind of helps. I <laughs> think It does. You know what though? It's crazy when people get like first meet us, like, you guys are so similar. I'm like, you don't know us then. Because when you really yeah. get to know us, you're like, our personalities are opposite. Sure. Yeah. Which I'm sure you even you even seen. I I, I saw from the I, I used to mix up you guys like your names, but like that's I, what, I was, yeah people always do that. But like it, it was always something where like I kind of understood like the differences sure. between you two, which is nice. How is like for me like do you ever feel like you're going to inevitably? Oh, okay, that's a dumb question. Of course you're going to live apart. But what what do you see happening, and how do you see that happening? Um, I love how I'm asking like the most critical questions ever. What no, your sister's but you know watching. what? It's crazy because we've <laughs> both had this conversation. Sure. So it's it's funny that you bring it up. Sure. So after we move out of this house that we're in now, we discussed that like obviously we'd live together, but there is a chance we're like, let's say if we were in an apartment building, mm-hmm. maybe let's get separate apartments, but they're right next to each other. That'd be cool. Like that's a step. You know what I mean? Like we're you still super buy a close. Yeah, just full on. Yeah. But I'm like honestly, like it's good because in two minutes I can be right by her doorstep if she needed me. But I can also go lock my door and she doesn't have to enter it when I want don't want her there. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. But um And you have your own space. And exactly. Your own stuff. It's not like I don't have that now, but I just don't have enough of it. So sure. I don't know. I know for sure it's gonna be when we get married and move out and stuff. Like we definitely aren't gonna be living together, but I don't know the time, like if there's gonna be a time earlier where we where we really separate. Do you, does Asha share the same feelings? Yeah. 
That's be, that, that must be nice, though. Yeah, especially when it comes to work, too. Like, we're always together, so it's convenient sure. if we both are together. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I think communication is key, especially in situations like that. Yeah, because, like, what if one of us are feeling a certain way right. and then she's coming over here saying something else? It will be a whole big <laughs> argument. Thank God we think the same in some ways. <laughs> God, it makes things a little easier. Yeah, so uh, it's it's funny because I'm, I'm navigating through this while I'm about to talk to your sister as well, which is oh, just— gosh. I feel like it's so fun. This is exciting. I should fun. do more interviews like this. But that being said, um, do you guys have, have different ambitions? Like for you, like what do you want to do when you're older? Not obviously. I hate the question, where do you see yourself in five years' sure. time? Because let's be honest, five years ago, we would not picture ourselves in this exact position. Literally not in a year. So like, but what do you see for yourself to be like, hey, I'm doing something I love. I'm happy. I'm content. Like like married, kids, job, house. Walk okay. me through it. There's Dog. two really important things. Okay. One is starting a business. Love so it. in the works of that happening right now, because obviously that's my long-term goal is, and it's the smartest move, you know, for someone in our, our age, in our sure. position that, you know, is very like lucky to be where we are. Um, I think being smart with that mm -hmm. is the most important. So starting a business, which is in the works, but I'm not going to talk about what it is. I'm not going to um, But that's the first thing is, you know, having a business. Second, most importantly to me is um, having a family. Like I'm also such a lover when, when it comes to me and Ozra, that's one thing we differentiate is I love with my whole heart and I um, love very easily. And I am a hopeless romantic where she's kind of like, let me do my thing. I'll find it when I need to. Right. She doesn't really think twice about it when mm -hmm. that's kind of something that's on my mind a lot. Um, so I'm just excited to find like the love of my life and just have a family and just being able to start that chapter is so exciting for me. And people are always like, you're 21. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, who said age has to like anything to do with it? Like sure. everyone's got their own journey. And I think that I'm in a great place in my life right now where I could even have that right now if I wanted to right. and be okay with it. So those are the two things that I'm really looking forward to. What do you think's holding you back? Just it's in like, general? It's kind of like an in-depth question that kind of allows you to think exactly like what you, like what's your biggest weakness? What What's stopping you from, like, are you happy? I am happy, but I will say my biggest downfall right now in my life, which is good that I recognize it, um, is that I am not being selfish enough. I am not focusing on me enough as I should be. Right. And is that is that something you want to do or is that something you're scared to do? It's something that I – both. Right. I want to do it, but I'm scared to do it. So it's like how do I go about it? I just know that in my life right now, like – if I am my biggest priority, I will go super far and I'll accomplish my dreams and all that. Sure. But do you think you'll be happy doing that? During the time of me getting there, no. Right. I know that there's going to be so many things that I'm thinking about because I'm a very big overthinker, mm -hmm. um, which is why I'm very hesitant to do a lot of things. Um, I just think that I I overthink a lot and I give my attention and my t my mind is always not focused on me. Mm -hmm. It's always focused on maybe someone else mm -hmm. or, you know, other parts of my life that I could, you know, be stressed out about. But I think that that holds me back a lot because I see like, for example, there was this girl on social media that I've been like looking at a lot and she wakes up at 4 a.m. every day. Seems excessive. And I'm sure to a lot of people that is, and it's crazy. But she has all this time where she can reflect on herself and grow and she's been like my motivation for life because I'm like, that's how I want to be as a person. Like, right. I want to be okay to wake up at 4 a.m. and be excited about life, but it's like, why am I dreading it? Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. I want to be excited about it. And I can't wait until I get to that point because sure, I'm sure I will soon. Mm -hmm. um, but for right now, I think I'm just kind of like at a weird place where I don't know how to get out of this like funk. Do you think you're lost? In some aspects. I feel like my vision is very clear as to where I want to be, so I'm not lost in that sense. It's just the steps taking to get yes, to it. that I don't even know how to approach. So I'm like, it's true. let me just sit back and just see what happens when that's definitely not the way to do it at all. So interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I love that. I love figuring it out. It's, it's just interesting. It's, it's part of the fun, but it's also sure. scary. It's very scary. It's, it's, it's very fucking scary. I think, and I've said this before, I think, honest to God, and, and the privilege that I have to be able to say this is something interesting. It's like, I miss being homeless because... There was only it could only go up from there, and it was something where it was like, "Wow, do you know what's crazy about yeah. you saying that?" For the past two months, um, I would say like there were moments where I've been super unhappy the past couple months, but sure. the past month or so, I've had this mindset that's helped me actually a lot, and it's kind of actually yeah, it's helping me get out of that place of feeling lost. Is having no expectation for anyone around me or anything, mm -hmm. because once I set an expectation, I'm allowing myself to have a downfall. Or to feel sad about it not going that way. So when I have no expectation for something or an extremely low expectation, the chances of it being a better outcome is higher. 
Kind of like what you said. Right. Like and everything it's been happens for such a reason. a great yeah. way to think of life, honestly. So the way I think of it, and I've had a lot of things happen to me, and I've said this mm-hmm. in every single podcast now, which is something nice. So everyone who's reoccurring and coming to listen to us or watch this again, I'm glad you're going to get the same exact insight you've gotten in every <laughs> fucking episode. Everything happens for a reason, and the cards that you're dealt that you're terrible are setting up for a path that's something that's going to be good. 100%. And I always it's say beautiful. this too. I'm like, God has a path for everyone, and something that's meant for me can't be taken away. Beautiful. And it's just so true. Like, if it's meant for me, there's no way it's not going to come to me. So why am I, like, so afraid? Well, I appreciate it. Uh, your time's up. <laughs> oh, wow. Shoot. He's like, get out. Now uh, I'm going to have <laughs> Calvin. If you're ready, you can escort Ozra in and get Aisha out of here. Uh-oh. I want I want Calvin to come in. I want to see him again. Yeah. Calvin, yeah, butt better be perking, my man. Can I see? There we go. Ooh. Looking <laughs> good, Calvin. Thank you. Deputy Goldby, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to escort you out, bring your other half in, and... Uh, I'm okay with that. Wherever half. you go, I go. All righty. Let's do it. <laughs> Calvin has no idea how to react. Take a seat, Azra. Oh, man. That Welcome. was fun to watch. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Oh, this is scary being here now. So you were watching from in, uh, from the other room. Yes. What did you get from that? All right. What I got from that was, one, Aisha literally hates me right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Or um, I got that. Also, I feel like she literally explained, like, everything she was saying was, like, when you were asking a question was how I would answer the question. It was so interesting. Like, talking about, like, the whole growing up, like, religious family thing. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we kind of think the same, which is weird. Like, I would think about a scenario, and she would say it, and I was like, whoa. Have you guys ever been split up like this? No. No, no, no. Which is why I think it's so interesting, like, hearing how she would answer a question. Because some of them I was like... Hmm. But most of them, I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I was going to say the same thing. Is there anything she said that you did not agree with? Ooh. Huh. I'm trying to think now <laughs> what the whole conversation started with. Your guys' car ride home um, is going to be so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um, I don't think it was something – like one thing that I would just disagree with in general. I think sure. it was everything maybe slightly <laughs> like different. Sure. But it, for like in, like generally the same, but like everything maybe slightly different. Right. But it's not one thing that she says that I was like, nah. I'm not gonna ask you any of the same questions. Oh man, I was yeah. pre- that's what I was prepared for. Oh okay. no, no, no. Okay. I know you would be prepared for that. That's why oh, I'm not man. asking. Okay. Right I, I might have a few. Okay. Are you competitive with oh, I'm very Aisha? Competitive with Aisha. Why is that? As a twin, sure. Like you are compared to each other so much. Sure. Like to the point where it was like Aisha is this, but Oz was better at that, but Aisha's better at this. So it was always kind of like we you would look like, at each yeah. other and like kind of be like annoyed, like Ugh, I hate that everyone thinks she's better at this than I am. So I'm gonna try harder. So like anytime we were like doing something together, it was always like one of us always trying to one up each other, mm-hmm. which is not a good thing because like we would sometimes like get mad at each other because of it, but also probably our biggest asset that we have because by us always trying to one up each other, it just cr- made us like even greater what we did. 100%. So like we wouldn't have to do something. We would do it 110% just so we could be better than the other one. Did that ever cause problems between you two? Oh, yeah. I would say growing up, I don't know. Like I, she was always like the the it twin, like in school. Like she went homecoming queen. Like she was always like, right. to, from my perspective, like it was Aisha and then it was me, which is so bad to think about because like 100%. it wasn't like that at all. Like it was just me like being insecure, I think, sure. because me and Aisha were always compared like how we looked and like people would be like, oh, like Ozra is like the thicker one. Ozra is like the not as cute one. Like, yeah, it was always like that growing up. Like I, I got so like to the point where like, I know I was literally like, I grew up like so insecure about it, but like sure. now I'm just like, I literally have no cares for whatsoever. So like that growing up was so bad because I became, like I said, very insecure. But then Aisha also felt bad, felt bad for me because she felt like it was her fault. When nothing she did was her fault. It was wow. just me being like insecure because other people would say things and compare the two of us. So it was always just like it would get between us, not in a sense where like we would get mad at each other, but we get emotional for each other. Like I felt bad for her because like she felt bad. she felt bad for me, if that makes sense. How did you overcome it? I've definitely overcome it for the most part. I still like will sometimes read comments and I'll let it get to me. But sure. um, Aisha will put me in my place. And she'll be like, Azra, like really? And then she'll like talk to me. And I'm like, you're so right. I think what made me get over it was um, maybe like once I started going to college is I don't even know what like what the transition was and like what my mindset, what changed my mindset and like what exactly the pinpoint was in my feelings towards like confidence. But I think it was when I stopped – looking at, stop wanting to be like Aisha. 
Sure. That's so sad to say, but like I would always look at Aisha and like want to be like her. Like she was like my idol, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. so weird. Like we're twins. Like it, it doesn't make sense, but that's how I looked at it. I was always like, I want to be like her. So I would do things like her. But then once I started like developing my own like interests and likes, and normally if I had interests and likes that Aisha didn't, I would stop myself from doing it. Right. But then I got to a point where, where I was like, why am I doing that to myself? So I started like going after those things, even though it was very uncomfortable doing things without her. That was a huge stepping stone for me, like developing like my own like loves and like, like independency, if that makes sense. So it kind of just came with, without, it came like naturally when I stopped looking at Aisha as like what I wanted to be. Well, I think inadvertently it made you both probably the strongest people ever, I think mentally. Yeah. Something we're pretty, that, I mean, yeah. this job as it is, like especially the job we're in, you you are being open to judged and being open to criticism Definitely. and your whole, and it's not like, it's not like you're an actor. It's not like you're playing a character. Mm-hmm. You are like your personal exactly. life and your personality is being open to judge. Yep. So I think add that on top of it and then being compared to someone who you love and care for mm-hmm. is also something that is like, okay, well, fuck. Exactly. So I think inevitably the fact that you were able to overcome that is just insane. No, I honestly like it got to the point where I felt like I was never going to get over that. Sure. Like I like kind of fell into like a depression, like maybe like senior year of high school, like junior year, maybe my mom, my whole family could see it. I was just like, I got so quiet. Like I used to be the kid where I was always so like happy, fun, like I would make people laugh. And then like once like middle of high school hit, I became so, so quiet. And like my family didn't even recognize me at one point. They're all like, we don't even know who Osra is. Like she just like. Like, sure. normally we get, like, family fights or, mm-hmm. like, whatever. We bicker. I'd be the first one to stand up and I'd give my opinion. And, like, i say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. But sure. so it got to the point where, like, everyone started fighting and I'd just sit there. And my mom be like, Oz, are you going to say anything? And I'm just like, no. Like, it was so bad. Like, I was literally a different person. But, no, I literally, it felt like at that point in my life I was never going to get out of it. People always ask me, like, what what changed? And I really can, like, not answer it because I really don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, I think it's just oh, you're growing up as growing well. Growing up. Yeah, that's what it is, I guess. You but... guys are both 21. That's nuts. I know. We're, we're so young. I'm 21. No. I know. I always forget that. How do you, you think I am? Well, I knew you were 21 because we, we talked about it. But I, if I didn't know your age, I feel like you're very mature for a 21-year-old. So I get I would, that a lot. Well, you are for sure. Thanks. Because every 21-year-old I meet is not like you at all. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm just compared to like my high school friends. But sure. Are you <laughs> um, close with your high school friends? I was thinking like old high school friends. But I only have like two high school friends now. Right. And they were like – it was it was like literally so funny because like in high school we um, – like Aisha said, I think she said, like, we weren't popular, but, like, mm. we didn't know everyone in our high school. So, but, like, our best friends were, like, um, like two girls from our finance class sure. that, like, didn't have – they had friends, but, like, they were so closed off. And, like, me and Aisha became, like, so close with them. And they're, they're, like, the only two girls we still talk to today. And then we have a whole bunch of those high schoolers now, like, the popular kids who, like, try to reach out. And now I'm just like, you literally never spoke to me. Like, what are you doing? And – yeah, no, I have like a little bit of high school friends, but not really. Were you were you guys a minority in your high school? What do you mean? Like, was there a lot of Muslim? Oh no, actually, um, how, how we was went that? to a predominantly it was like all white kids in our school. How was like, that? It was hard because we literally we had like one girl um, that was in our class that was Muslim, so we like we attached onto her like sure. as soon as we met her because we always had something to talk about, something to relate to. Um, it was, high school wasn't that bad, but growing up in like elementary school and middle school, it was also predominantly white and no Muslims. So that was hard because me and I should always felt like the outcasts. Like right. it was always so like, I don't know. My parents felt really bad for us because, you know, let's say we didn't celebrate Christmas cause you know, we're not Christian. Sure. Um, and we literally like kids would be like participating in like the Christian, I mean, not the Christian, the Christmas like things that happened in school. And like me and my sister would like sit out and like my parents felt so bad for us because they didn't want us to be like the outcasts. So like they let us like not celebrate Christmas, but like like get each other presents, and, like get, do like traditional stuff so like we can like fit in. So I would say that it was it was hard like when we were way younger. In high school, it wasn't as hard because like we both kind of knew who we were and we were really comfortable with it. But in middle school, we were both like those awkward kids who like only had each other. So, yeah, growing so up, it was weird. You moved to L.A., and, you know, something, like, that your sister touched on earlier was that you guys moved in with, like, a group of guys. Mm-hmm. And that's something, again, that you guys obviously weren't used to. Yeah, at all. For you guys, was it, was it so different that it was kind of, like, crazy? Like, I, I'm trying to think of the way of, like, maneuvering around this, but necessarily, like, is it, it's so vastly, like, kind of – Different from the normal. way you grew up yeah. and the way that you view your normal. Mm-hmm. Like when we first moved out here and moved to the compound, right. I still don't process that and I still don't feel like it was real. 
that's how crazy it was of a transition, like right. com- coming from New York, you know, living with my two older sisters and my parents and then moving to a house of like four or five guys and like only one girl, Kellyanne, or well, Olivia lived there too, so like two girls. So it was very, very like, it was like we didn't have time to process what was happening because we literally went from like nothing to like this whole thing. Like we didn't have time to sit down and be like, Aisha, like what is our life right now? Like we never got to talk about it. And like now that we're in this new house, like we have days where we sit down, like just the two of us and we're like, what is our life? Like, can we process that? Like we're living with people that, you know, we used to watch online and that was the weirdest thing I think was, you know, we watched a majority of the people that lived in compound on TikTok before we moved in. Right. Like we were fans of like TikTokers and like YouTubers and stuff like that. So we were never in the space. We were always like watching from the outside. So when we moved in, it was like, am I like on a show? Like it didn't feel real. So I think like now it just, it still has not processed. I don't think it ever will until I'm out of this like space because Living with, you know, your family and then going to living with friends, it literally felt like, for me, I was living like the rebellious childhood I never had. You know, while I wasn't doing anything, I was literally just like living with people that, you know, like every day felt like a different adventure in that house. Like who's going to, you know, who's going to do a little bit for their vlog and what's right. going to happen? What's going to break? You know, it felt like every day you're in for a treat. So it felt like I was literally living like a, in a college. Like that's the only way I could describe it was like my college experience that I never had. So like living that's in a dorm. That's exactly how I would describe it. Yeah. Like it's kind of like living, like I felt like I was living in a do- like a frat house. Exactly. That's exactly what the compound was. Do you find it difficult to differentiate transactional relationships to friendships in this business? Because you do, you know what I'm talking about. Like transactional relationships is kind of when you you film with people, yeah. you're acquainted with them, you say hi when you right. see them, but most of the time you kind of like only film with them. And then there's friends, there's people you genuinely enjoy hanging out with, like let's say Nate or someone mm-hmm. like you know you live with. It, is it difficult to find friends in LA for you? Oh my God, it's so hard. Is but it, and that is that because of your like the way that you maybe have like felt throughout your life, or is that from the job? Like walk think- me through that. I think it's definitely from the job. I don't even sure. think it's like how I grew up. Because like, you know, we mean I should made friends pretty easily in like school. Like right. were they temporary? Only like a year or two? Yeah. Because like that's what happens when you get older. Right. Like how many people could say they're still friends with that kid from middle school that they were best friends with, you know? Sure. So I don't think it was anything with growing up. I definitely think it has to do with LA. And it's so sad to say because like you never know what people's true intentions are when they come up to you. It's either like, for example, I see you, right? Let's say we never met before. It's like, I say hi, you say hi, you know who I am, I know who you are. We're both like, oh, let's film a video together. It will do well. We film, right? Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know if you want to use me just for your views or if you're going to like hit me up like the next week and be like, hey, like, how have you been? Like, want to be friends? Because a lot of people out here, like, will just like, you know, film their content that, you know, whatever. So it's always like so tough. And that's why I love when like, for example, you and Cover did that whole hibachi night. (laughs) I had the time of my life. And like, literally everyone like what, pulled up a camera like once or twice, just like record what's going on. Cause like, we do it for fun because we like it. It didn't feel forced though. We yeah. were all there genuinely hanging out with each other, good conversations, and that's what I love. Yeah, and I know you guys were talking, you and Cover, have, we've talked about it all together so many times of like how we struggle with like making friends because yeah. we never know people's intention. But um, All my friends yeah. are quite literally people I grew up with. That's it. Like I, I, brought, I brought them up to LA and I, I, I don't really like, I mean, minus like obviously there's, there's a group of people and like you guys are a part of that group of something. It's like, you know, when you guys got your surgery, we came over and like, I know. Yeah, that was it was just so something, fun. it's just like, it's difficult, I guess, for me to make friends. And that's why I ask you the question. It's just because I sometimes feel like I'm either being used or I don't want people to think that I'm using them. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. Which is why like some of the people, when we first moved into I compound. I we're overthinking it sometimes. We are overthinking <laughs> it because this is what I've talked about with Nate, it's for example. It's our job too. It is our job. <laughs> Thank you. You're literally saying exactly what I was going to say. But when we first moved into the house, into the compound, like I didn't want to, me and I were like the smallest creators at the time when we first moved in. Look so at I, you now. I know, right? <laughs> um, it's funny. But when we first moved in, I was like, I don't want to pull out a camera and ask Nate to film a video. Like what if he thinks I'm just using him for views? But then I think about it, I'm like, that's our job one. Two, we live together. We're going to be living together for another year. So like might as well develop that friendship. And we literally did not speak to Nate for the first like few weeks of like living there. Like we would say hi and bye, like, but it was not like a friendship or anything. But I noticed what the crazy part was, was those people that, you know, we met in LA. Let's say we started off by filming videos together. It was, it did not feel like a friendship until like we started hanging out a lot more. And the more that we became closer, we just never pulled out the camera. Like now, like it's it's so sad because like we live with Nate, but we barely film videos with him, but like we talk to him all the time. And like we'll have like deep conversations with him. And like with him, I could say it's an actual friendship. But from this when it started, like I don't think it what we had like a friendship. I think we were both just like living in a house together and like felt the need to film. But now it's like we're actually such good friends that 
we don't pull out the camera more often. Which now you think we would because now we're such good friends and we both have jobs. It just <laughs> but doesn't now make you're sense. so good of friends that you don't want to <laughs> exactly. So it just it's very it's a very weird like dynamic. I don't know. I can't even explain it. So who's Allison Sarzosa? Oh, that's like Nate's girlfriend. I don't know if they're like yeah, they're dating. Nate's girlfriend. Was there anything that happened between that? You know, there's things that happen online with her in a whole situation that, you know, was brought up and she not gonna lie, she still faces a lot of hate to this day, which I pers- I like don't even understand. Like she does get a lot, a lot of hate for past things that have happened between her and her friends and then me and my sister. I'm not gonna really get into that because most people probably know. But um What's so interesting, I have no idea really? what this is. <laughs> well, there was a video that like when she was li- she wasn't live, but one of her friends was live True. and apparently they were just talking not the nicest things about me and my sister, but she didn't know they were live. She wasn't really saying much. It was her friends saying the stuff. So like the the live video leaked and then, you know, it kind of went out and then people were like, oh, like Kimberly, this is the girl that Nate's talking to. Like she's so rude. But she wasn't really saying that much. It was her friends that were saying some stuff. But um, it was more of like a misunderstanding, that whole situation. Like we've talked to her. We've had multiple conversations. You know, we're on good terms. We're not like, I, I wouldn't say like we're best friends, but like we're not like she walks in like we don't hate each other, you know? Right. It's like we keep our distance. Like things happen. You know, it's understandable. But um, it also is upsetting to see how much hate she still is getting because I know it bothers Nate. And Nate is like one of our closest friends. And like I don't like seeing Nate upset. So it upsets me seeing Nate upset because of her being upset because <laughs> of fans. Sure. And like she doesn't really do social media that much. And most of the hate that she's getting is like from people that love me and my sister, which don't get me wrong. I, I love my fans so much. And like I'm so happy they're so supportive mm-hmm. of us that like, you know, they'll like fight anyone for us. But also this girl's like falling into like depression or like maybe right. not depression, but like it's just it's hard to see hate. Do you feel responsible for that at all? I don't feel respons- I don't feel responsible at all. A lot of there's a disconnection. And a lot of people who aren't in our business thinks that we can somehow control our fans. That's and what so that's, that's the most annoying thing is, yeah. is, at the end of the day, our fans are just normal people and they're fans of a lot of other people. Mm-hmm. The things that we say may not always influence yeah. all of them. And maybe they just will fight for whatever's right no matter what we say exactly. or what they think is right yep. no matter what we say. So I think it's like part of me is why I'm asking is like it's, if you felt responsible if something is along the lines of that entirety, is like you would feel like it's your fault because it's your fans. Um, actually, now that I think about it, maybe a little bit. I felt like it was my fault because of the fans, but... Like our like one thing I've noticed is that our fans, like me and Aisha, they're so like strong, they're so powerful, and like we love them so much. But like there's times where like they'll even get mad at like they're fans of us, but they get mad at us sometimes for like some things we'll sure. do. And then I'm like, oh my god, like how are our fans getting mad at us? Like it's so like twisted, but like they love us so much that they also like are, I guess, so protective holding and holding us accountable, which is a good thing, but also like it makes us a little like not upset, but we get emotional over it, like, sure. are we doing enough, or like, are we are we bad people, or whatever. So sometimes I do feel a little responsible for her getting all that hate because it is coming from a lot of our fan pages. But like at the same time, like I can't control what, how they feel. I can't like, and you know, there's a lot of things we want to keep private. Like Nate and her relationship, they're so happy, but they want to keep it private. And then when our fans are getting in the way, it's like we're our fan accounts, not even just our fan accounts, but people that love us so much, or like I guess don't like her and his relationship bash them and like that gets between the relationship and that's why I always tell Nate I'm like Nate just like try to keep it offline because like if you two want to be happy I know they really like each other I'm just like like I'm sorry like we we can't help it like did this affect your guys's friendship at all yeah but I think I think we got closer because of it because yeah no for sure and I think we became way more open with like communicating to each other of like how it affected our friendship Mm -hmm. but um I mean we still love Nate like we're still best friends with him like we don't hate him at all like people online think like we show Nate like a lot of support that he doesn't show us back, which is not true. Right. Um, people just will sometimes twist things online, which is why we like to keep our friendship with Nate like a little more private now because if you bring anything online, it's like people are going to find a way to sure. twist it. 100%. So I would say it did affect our friendship in the beginning because like when that whole thing was very fresh, it was like Nate's best friends, but then Nate's girlfriend, like he didn't know who to like run to first and like who to make feel better. It was like he was in a really tough position, which I feel really bad for. Um, that Nate had to even go through any of that because right. Nate is also like a super anxious person. Uh, yeah. So you probably know that. I know Nate. Yeah. So <laughs> I lived with Nate for a little bit as well. I, oh, really? Yeah. Hi, pass. Oh, wait. That's right. How Come on I now. That? How we're long? both wearing content houses. I know. How long were you guys? A few months. A few months. Nothing long. But you just know he's a very anxious person. I didn't get to know him too well, which is no. funny because when I lived with he's him. He's quiet. But, uh, yeah. In our, in our time spent, like, you know, I lived with 14, 15 other people. Yeah. So it's like, you know, living with 15 people in one home is, is um, it's kind of like a brothel. <laughs> 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 so that's something along the lines of just kind of, you know, you do, you 
as much as I can, you hear you lived with someone you think you know everything about them. Yeah. But genuinely speaking, it was like an apartment complex yeah. at that house. So it was kind of a little difficult. Fun. But yeah, so you would know, like, I mean, Nate's always been like this since I've known him. He's very closed off, very quiet until yeah. like you can like be with him one on one. Maybe he'll open up to you a little bit. Right. It literally took us a year and a half. Like, this is the closest we've ever been. Like, even six, seven months ago, I wasn't this close to Nate. Like, Nate is a hard one to crack. So, um, he was just he was going through a really tough time when all this was going down because you know he really likes his girl and then he you know we're his closest friends and like how does he balance that out? So I mean he's still getting he's going through it now but it's it's getting better. It's just like tough times. It happens. How would you navigate dating in LA? I knew you had an answer ready for it, so I had to get you off topic. Okay, okay, I like it, I like it, I like it. <laughs> Twist it a little bit. I'm a very um, closed off person. It's really hard for me to like someone. Why? I don't know. I'm I'm very like focused on myself, so I feel like not that I get the ick very easily. Okay, <laughs> but maybe what's the ick? Okay, can pause real ick? quick. What is the ick? Is Everyone like, talks about this. I feel like I'm 40 and I don't know anything. Really? What is the I ick? I didn't really know what it was until like recently. Either. What does it mean? So the ick is like when a guy will do something and you automatically are like, Ugh. oh, so it's a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, I thought the ick was a good thing. No. It's like the ick is like some guy does a good thing and it's like, ugh. No. Like, or like sometimes a guy will think he's doing a good thing, but the girl's like looking at it like, oh, that was. Oh, do you get the ick a lot? Um, Yes. But also like for really dumb reasons, which is like not good because sometimes I won't give a guy a chance because he gives me the ick. And it's just like I'm holding myself back. But anyway, what I was going to say is like Aisha's way more of like a like a lover, if that makes sense. Sure. Like she'll look at someone and be like, oh, my God, like. Whatever, like he's cute. I want to talk to him. Whatever, she'll go for it. For me, like I'll do it too, but then like I get over it so fast. <laughs> do you think that the reason you may not be more open to kind of talking with other people, it, like stems down to the fact that you and your sister were always compared to each other? Probably. I think. Or do that's you think definitely, that's something different? I think it could have been. That's a hard hitting question. That is, because <laughs> you know, I would I would say probably that's probably where it stems from. Because I mean, growing up, like there was one guy, you know, that I kind of thought was really cute in high school, right? And he ended up like liking my sister, and like that's when it gets so weird. Because I'm like, wow, like are you just scared I to get start- hurt? Yeah, I think that's what it is, and that's what I, Aisha always tells me. She goes, "Oswald, you're just scared of getting hurt, so you like you push it away." Right. Even if a guy's like so good for me, like, and Aisha will be like, "Oswald, he's perfect." I'll be like, "Yeah, I know he's perfect, but like, I don't know." And then I'm, I get over, it and then I don't talk to the person anymore. And which wow. is completely my fault. And I feel so bad because sometimes, like, not that I'll ghost a guy because, like, I think that's so wrong. But sometimes I'll, like, slowly stop talking to them without explanation. But sometimes I don't even have an explanation explanation to give them. Mm-hmm. I'm just, like, it's, like, a genuine, like, maybe insecure feeling or, like, me being over it. I don't know. I, I like to focus on myself. And I'm very much, like, in the space right now where I'm just, like, I can't really talk to anyone. Which is so interesting because, like, at the same time, I crave that idea of like finding someone, getting engaged and getting married. Like Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for that point in my life. And it's interesting because like I don't give myself enough chances. Like my mom always says, like she's always like asking me like, oh, is there any other guys that you like, you you know, you're talking to? I'm just like, no. And she's always like, also, you you have to like give yourself chances. You're not going to find anyone if you don't. And I'm like, I don't know. I just have a hard time finding the right guy, if that makes sense. Right. That does. Are, are Are you happy? I would say I'm like, Past couple of months have been like the happiest I've ever been in my life. Yeah, right. I would say if you asked me that question a year ago, my answer would be completely different. I was sure. not happy at all, and I don't know if that was because of I don't want to say the compound, but like there's just there's a lot of well, content houses do that too. Yeah, and I wouldn't which, say it was you're like, talking to a guy who partially created one. True, I wouldn't even say it was it just being toxic because like everyone was so amazing in there, but. I don't know. Like it was very like kind of depressing, and I. It is. I mean, it's it's living where you work is always a difficult thing. But I think along the lines of kind of you not giving maybe a guy a chance. I think that might be just something that you know you're you're kind of psyching yourself out for because you're scared of getting hurt. No, it's exactly what it is. And you want to focus on yourself. That's exactly what it is. And I I know I'm I say that I'm like want to focus myself. I think that the the dangerous part of that is like if you're always focusing on yourself, inevitably. Or at, at one point, you're never going to stop focusing on yourself and you're going to keep, like, focusing on yourself. I know. I think... <laughs> and it's and it's a beautiful thing to put yourself first and it's a beautiful thing yeah. to focus on no, yourself. No, but I definitely think I say that as a cover-up. Maybe. <laughs> I, no, not even maybe. Like, now that I said it again. Like, I say it all the time. It's definitely me trying to avoid the fact that I don't want to be get hurt. I should even know. So this is one guy that, like, for the first time in my life, I actually, like, kind of have interest in. Oh. For the past couple of, like, f- past few months. And, like, it's a very interesting feeling because, like... I not that like I 
really, really like him, or like I'm in love with him, not at all that, but like it's someone that I'm actually willing to like talk to and get to know, which for me rarely ever happens. Like I rarely find a guy that I am willing to like talk to, but I actually did kind of like, I don't even know if like I, like I found someone, it's not even that, it's just like me, I found someone that I'm interested in, if that makes sense, for the first time ever. That's nice. How's yeah. it going? It's good. I mean, it's not like, I don't know how he, because we don't like talk about like, we're just, sure? we're great friends. That's good. And for me, this is how I think of it. I'm like, we're such good friends. Don't want to ruin it. We're such good friends. Could things like do better, you know? Could things yes. move forward? I think also for you though, you might be consistently kind of being like, we're such good friends. Like, I don't want to ruin it. Or I'm just too scared that I... <laughs> yeah. No, it definitely is that. But um, I'm also just like, I'm at a place right now in my life where like, like I said, I'm, I'm very much focused on what I'm doing. That's amazing. That I don't think I could prioritize a relationship or caring for someone else. Until you're, um, you're ready for until it. Until I'm like, maybe it just like happens, then I'll be like, okay, well, I wasn't expecting that. Let's go for it. Oh, I but, love that. Like, yeah, I'm willing, like, if it just happens, I'm willing to go with it. I'm not going to stop it and be like, no, like, I'm focusing on myself. I love but that. But if it just happens, why not? You know? That's a cool way to think about it. Yeah. Honestly, just kinda, that kinda is kind of wait really for the cool. right moment. That's what my mom Your always says. Your princess moment. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is staying busy kind of an excuse to not be romantic? <laughs> <laughs> is Aisha laughing in there? <laughs> um, actually, no. Good. I think um, naturally, like I'm coming after you. I'm so sorry. No, I don't. No, I love it. So you're actually making me think on these sure, questions, sure. which I didn't even think about that question. Welcome um, to locked in. Oh man. Ooh. <laughs> um, no, I think staying busy is just something personally I like to do anyway because if I don't feel busy, I feel me and Aisha have this problem where like. If we're like lazy for one day, we hold ourselves accountable accountable like to the point where it's like unhealthy and like we will like mentally like drain each other like we're not doing enough, we're falling off. That's like, we, what we I stress, do. Stress and then like when I say stress I me mean to the point where like I literally like get so anxious and like you feel like I think about, your body gets tingly and you feel like you're out out of your body. Out experience. of body experience. And yes. I just like literally I can have one day and like you feel gross. You want to go do something, but you, you can't do something because you like. That's it's what I'm like, saying. Yes. And then that's why I'm trying so hard to think of our job as like a nine to five. I'll work for my nine to five. And then after that, I can relax. But our life is our work. We don't know what a nine to five. Yeah. So I get so confused. So I'm just like, I try to stay as busy as possible. So I don't think like that. Because like one day, like I, it's so weird. I actually don't take naps for that reason. Mm -hmm. And I rarely will take a nap because, and you know that Drake song? He goes, I don't take naps. Me and the money are way too attached to go and do that. No, I don't listen to rap. I don't listen. To, I've never really listened to Drake that much, but I heard that line and I was like, I don't take naps. Me and the money are way too attached to go and do that. Since that day when I heard that song, I'm not even kidding you. I've never taken, I haven't taken naps. Also shows me a tattoo of that. Like <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no, but like I, I literally, because if I take a nap, I would feel lazy. Sure. I'd be like, I'm not working hard enough. I yeah. could have easily stayed up those two hours and edited a video. What am I doing? I'm a failure. And then like me and I should, will like sit there and like cry to each other. Like how we're just failures in life. Do you ever think that'll stop? No, sadly. Like, I do wish you, it would. You think you're going to have kids and all that stuff and still, still kind Maybe of. Maybe. Do you when, think, like, do you think you're searching for more? It's like the kind of the root of that. Like essentially everyone who's been in that chair mm -hmm. has almost said the exact same thing. Yeah. Including myself. And I'm in this chair. And that's something that I always think about is, am I always going to keep wanting more? Or am I ever going to be content? Do you ever see yourself like, like you said earlier, life moves really fast, especially our job. Like I blink and it's like, oh my God, the Wide Lake House, which was the second hype house was over a year ago. Nuts. Wow. But it's like, do you, do you see yourself ever going to be like, I'm good? <laughs> I actually... I would say maybe not fully satisfied, but sure. content. I think once I get like married, to be honest, amazing, engaged because that's that's like a big thing like that I want is just to like get married and have kids. And like Aisha said, we're only twenty one. We shouldn't be thinking about that that early. We should be focusing on ourselves. But I and like I crave that, you know, because I grew up like find someone, get married, have have kids. Like that's your life. So I think that once I have that in my life, maybe not even have kids, but maybe find someone, I think I'll actually be content with where I'm at because like. I'll have maybe someone else that like will take up so much of my time that mm -hmm. I won't think about me stressing about my work, if that makes sense. So I think I will eventually get to that point once I'm like married. Amazing. But before that, I don't think so. <laughs> and at this so. time, I'm ready for the verdict. If oh. Calvin, you could bring in Aisha, I think we're ready. Hey. We're back. <laughs>
Oh there man. Stay. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> are those shorts getting smaller? <laughs> they are not quite my size, but All right. I think they've shrunk. And at this current moment, I would find you guys guilty, but <gasps> we don't have enough handcuffs. So at this time, um, I'm gonna have to let you guys go. The Meon twins are officially locked out. <laughs> All right. Wait, that's such a cool outro. Thank you. Yeah, what the heck? Is there anything you guys want to promote or anything? Oh, we have a podcast too. Yes. Um, which we'd love to have you on as soon as possible. So maybe by the time this comes out, you'll be on ours. Yes. Um, it's called All Access with Azra and Aisha, or with Aisha and Azra. Azra Who goes Aisha. first? Me. Whatever. Always me. Besides the point. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoy it. <laughs> you are officially locked out.